violet skies that frame puffy golden pink clouds as we zoom onto a gorgeous scenery of perfect green, luscious rolling hills. The almond trees are in white and pink blooms, the petals falling and swaying with the slow, perfect breeze. Smells of floral perfumes, freshly dewed grass, and woody forestry fill our nostrils as we look upon a glorious palace. Made of white marble, the front columns standing tall and erect, decadently polished and shining in the sunlight. There's a beautifully ornate fountain with a statue of a timeless looking woman pouring the water out of her vase into the basin below. It's surrounded by an elegant square full of mosaic tiles of gold and white. The sound of water creates a serene feeling as we see a woman in a flowing white toga leave through the large front entrance and head towards the fountain. The statue and her have common features. In fact, one could say it might be her. She sighs and sits upon the side of the fountain. She gently flows her fingers through the water. Her deep brown hair curls majestically down her shoulders and lays just at her waist. She wears a gold diadem with leaves etched into it and a simple pearl in the center. Oh, if only my love would show me his face. What have I done to deserve such unrequited love but to not be allowed to see the face of my lover himself? They say he is a beast, but I do not believe a beast would treat me with such lavish endorsements and accommodations. The, the four of you, not five, the four of you hear and see all of this, except the woman does not see nor hear you right now. You are her invisible servants, the unseen help. You are able to speak to her when you want, to, when, when you want her to hear you with certain limitations. Uh, but she never sees you and never will. This is the task that you've been given by Eros, your master, the master of all Cupids. <clears throat> for 50 years, or a little longer uh, for one of you, you've been making sure uh, what once was a mortal woman, Psyche, is continuously infatuated with Eros, all while looking after her well-being. Um, you're all sitting atop the puffy clouds just above Psyche. Your bows and quivers filled with arrows are readily available, strapped to your naked little backs. Uh, and let's um, have everybody describe their characters. Let's start with Lars, all the way to my left. When you first see Hallmark, he is a, a majestic creature much like a raggedy turkey vulture, <laughs> but covered with the most delightful soft lavender feathers and a spritz of azure blue. Though, do not, do not fret, he is a kind soul with a, a giblet of generosity. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh... Rosé is, uh, I say, uh, a terrifying Cupid monster. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, uh, he has feathers that uh, look like uh, black and white stripes and a, a plume on top of his head that looks like a uh, beret. Uh, flying all around him are these uh, little doves. And every time that uh, Rosé gives out a little laugh, ha ha, <laughs> you hear each dove go, ha ha ha. So they echo, they echo you. I love that. Exactly. It's very good. That's, that's excellent. Doug? Yes, uh, Roussel is, uh, looks as though he's an, uh, uh, an African stork. He's very distinguished looking. Uh, he, you can tell he's very smart because he wears glasses. Uh, 
That's the tell. That's definitely the tell. Whenever you see a bird wearing glasses, you know he's very smart indeed. Uh, I, my brother is sitting next to me. He, he's younger than I, and he's been always viewed as the more popular and fun brother, and so therefore I'm the more serious and studious one. Uh, my beak is always buried in books, and uh, when uh, my mistress is bored, she might ask me to tell her a story, which would be Greek mythology to us, but to uh, our players is just hot gossip. I'm Stovar. You, uh, I say I look like a very short, very mighty kind of, um, I guess kind of like a pelican, sort of. Very uh, ornate tattoos all on my beak, oh. you know. Very, very shiny, very, lots of hearts, lots of stars, very glittery, always takes a bath in glitter every morning when he wakes up. <laughs> Loves to talk to people whenever the mistress is bored. He's always willing to go the extra mile to get her a new hat or a new dress or a box of whatever kind of assorted candy that she might like. And just is very friendly with everyone because he just wants to be everyone's friend. Yes, as um, as you could tell, these aren't the typical like uh, uh, chubby human babies. These so this is a little bit more. We got a little animalistic with it. They look like birds, but babies with baby birds with bellies and weird talons. And the but these are the these are the real cupids. <laughs> Let's get real. Um, okay, as you're sitting on these puffy clouds you suddenly hear a familiar sound. Goodness. Yes. Oh, that sound again. Ugh. Yeah. You are being summoned by Eros. Uh, so. <clears throat> Hark, to Eros we go. Yes. So you fly to the highest tower of the palace, to Eros's study, a large round room with pillars framing the marble tiled floors and walls. The dome is open to the never ending blue sky. Each of you rest your un unusually weird sharp claws on your assigned stoops, and there's a large golden desk in front of you, and uh, the tall, ornate golden chair behind it swivels around you as you hear, Let's get ready to battle! Uh, Eros is a god, the son of Venus and Mars. He's annoyingly attractive and uh, has quite the way with words. He can be very persuasive when he wants to, and that's most of the time. Uh, he has a sharp jawline, a pointy Superman chin. His dark hair perfectly curls into luscious locks, framing his pretty much perfect face. Um, and his, old, his golden eyes glow with determination. Everyone ready? Today's the day of the rest of your lives. Well, just one of you, really. I've really knocked this tournament out of the park. <laughs> Wait till you see what I've got planned for you. Three challenges. One of wit and bravery. Another of charm and persuasion. And lastly, one of cunning and mischief. The winner at the end ascends to my mother's domain to forever reign as a free Cupid, spreading love to all corners of the mortal earth. And as for the rest of you, you get to spend another 50 years here in paradise. Until the next tournament, of course. Now remember, as much as it would be so amusing to watch you immediately try to kill each other, there is an entertainment factor in the judging as well. Keep the crowd, and me, of course, uh, entertained. Otherwise, what would be the point of publicizing the event? Wounding, restraining, paralyzing, etc. Those are fun. Uh, remember, you're being judged at how you tackle each challenge, not necessarily what you do to each other. Some of you may choose to work together, you may all choose to work together, or you may all choose to work alone. Does anybody have any questions before we head to the battlegrounds? My, my, my lord, it just, at any point in time, uh, are, are you expecting us to, to turn on one another here? Oh, well, I could not predict what would possibly happen during this tournament. That's the, what's so fun about it. But, Master, there's, uh, there's more than just the four of us. 
uh, the, that, no, this is it. <laughs> this is the, the four of you. Unfortunately, <laughs> Tiffany's uh, got caught with the avian flu, so. <laughs> it was very tragic. We were supposed to go to the party together, but yeah. I just couldn't make it. It sounds like it was a good thing. Mm. Well, no, you, you all make it out alive if you so choose. This is a combat most foul. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun! <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> Any other questions? Uh-huh. Yes? Do they use cyber potato? <laughs> you Thank know what? You. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Great. And the other one. And will you be making a cyber potato too? The, it's, it, it's quite possible that Cyber Potato could possibly show up. I think he's, he's part of a different dimension, though, so it might not be there. That the, well, that, that's the post of in, entertainment. So. I, I have a question. Yes. One of us has been here in these parts before. Like, yes. One of us is not new to the situation. Mm -hmm. do, we know, do we know who it is? Uh, yeah, I would think so. Well, uh, y yes, I mean, I, I, I try to, I, I've, I've tried my tail feathers at this, this event before. It was a rather, um... Yes, Hallmark just, has been my, my trusty Cupid for how many years? Uh, a long, an eternity, my lord. <laughs> Feels like a second. Yes. <laughs> it's not, it, uh, I, I would really like it if we could not have to to throw jabs and, and bobs at one another this time. I think a team sport would be most appealing. Is there uh, any way, if we all work together, uh, do we do we all get to win? Ah, uh? oh, well, the, 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 if you work together, there will be certain ways that I will judge the tournament and each other, depending on how it works. Could, could, could we all just take, maybe take a week on? And, and, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this, unless, uh, if you want to ascend to the, to the, the next level of Cupidum, I think this is the best way to do it. In fact, it's the only way, because I invented it. <laughs> yes, yes, so. But Master Heroes, if Hallmark has done this before, don't you think that he might have an advantage? I know, isn't that fun? <laughs> we keep mentioning fun and it just, I'm just so excited. It sounds so fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shall we begin? Yes, an arrow snaps his fingers. Uh, so you're surrounded, once he snaps his fingers, you're immediately teleported. Uh, and you're surrounded by deafening cheering. <laughs> you see an enormous audience and right in front of you you see there are five targets just 50 feet away beyond that you see a large chunk tunnel into a majestic mountainside this is the tunnel of love up until now you've known about the tunnel and hallmark has actually been through the tunnel himself uh, You've, but the three of you have never seen it open. It's been blocked off and impenetrable for 50 years. Now, as you're looking towards it, you can see its firelit walls just beyond the opening. And you hear Eros's voice booming around you. Welcome all to another battle of the Cupids! These four contestants will be entering into the Tunnel of Love to face challenges they've never even dreamed. Which one of these daring cupids will have enough bravery, talents, and skills to win a ticket to the ascension into the realm of Venus, where they will have the freedom to touch any soul they choose with the power of love? Now, a pre-challenge challenge, entering the tunnel of love. Each contestant will make the shot of their lives with their trusty bow and arrow. Whoever hits the target best gains entry first, and the order goes from there. This is important, as the one who enters first has a little more time to assess the first challenge. Remember, not only do you have to do the three challenges during the tournament, but be wary of what else lies within the tunnel of love. Who knows what's lying in wait for your little baby bodies? 
Cupids. <laughs> I thought you might like that culture. Like that. Uh, Cupids, <laughs> ready your arrows and let those arrows fly. So basically, before uh, so basically, we're going to be rolling initiative, but we're going to use your two hit total. So I need everybody to use their longbow to roll to hit. What is this target? Uh, regular target? <laughs> like? Did um, you say it's fiendish or maybe giant? <laughs> not this time around. No, it's an inanimate object. <laughs> Not a, not a plant or a dragon either. Not this time. Only a plant. I like how y'all pay attention to your character sheets. Like, so that's exciting. <laughs> so if there is a tire at any point, we'll, we'll figure that out. What'd you get? Um, I don't want to talk about it. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? It's a, it's a that one. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> That, what do you add to it though? Because we'll just, we'll, yeah. we'll add to it. Um, plus eight, so nine. nine. A roguish 19. Ooh. Which is, which is, uh, nine. That's right. <laughs> 28. Woo! Okay. 16. Oh, man. I tried my best. 16? <laughs> okay. So it looks like, uh, uh, Roussel. I almost called you Russell, and that's not right. No, Roussel. 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 Um, so, uh, if everybody could kind of remember when they're going, we'll probably keep this initiative for just a little bit. So it'll be, uh, Roussel, and then it will be Hallmark, and then Stovar, and then Rosé. Um, so, and actually, I will say that the turns will start at the beginning of the tunnel. So you'll all fly up, and then you'll have a chance to, and then we'll start from there. So, yes? Uh, for my visual consideration, yes. are all four targets like, is it one big target, or are they like? You all each had your own target. Would you say my target is in the middle, or like, <laughs> off to the side? Uh... I would say that it's in the middle of four. So this <laughs> a little to the right of the middle. So we're just going down the line like one, two, three, four, and he's two. Gentlemen, I really appreciate you, and I apologize for what I'm about to do. And I'm going to take fault cast fault if I can. Oh, okay, explain first. Yes, what are you doing? I would like to cast Fog Cloud on the opposite three, switch my angle with one of the others, and then shoot at the furthest end. Uh, if they're all within a 20 foot radius, I should be able to exclude one target, shoot that target. So you're trying to give everybody disadvantage? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, so you do that beforehand. Yeah, you can do that. So you cast Fog Cloud, so everybody else roll again. That's rude. It is a rude, but this is the Battle of Cupids. I, I deeply apologize. I mean, I don't know if you really, it matters, it matters for you, really. The insurance policy is so much better up top. What'd you get? I got a 12. Oh, okay. I got a 15. Okay. What did Colter get? Um, he got an actual one wait, still. I, I, I got the lowest I could get on the first roll, so we're just going to stick with that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it. All right, so you all, so Hallmark will be starting off. You all fly up. As you all fly up, you see a deep river winding around the base of the mountain, and it flows into the Tunnel of Love. So as far as you can tell, there is no landing ground in the tunnel. Because <clears throat> it's fun. It says arrows. Uh, so the, uh, so you, the entrance to the tunnel looms over you. Uh, with firelit torches guiding the way. Uh, the air is dense with a, a mildewy scent and it immediately cools down quite a few degrees. Uh, the first challenge, as far as you can tell, is a little bit of a flyaway. All these, so, uh, and actually I'll just give you the, the feet. It's 100 feet, 150 feet away, to be exact. You each have 50 feet of flying speed and the cave ceiling is 20 feet above the water. So it's, so can you all picture that? And so we're gonna just start turn base around. What would you like to do first, Hallmark? Mm. 
really think about it. And Eros will say, as the contestants get to the tunnel, you can see all of their brains working hard to figure out what to do next. I guess I'm just going to try and fly straight in, a, in a kind of a, a straightish zigzag pattern. I, you know, I'm just going to dash. <laughs> so you dash, you, you, you fly 100 feet in a zigzag pattern. But, sure. But straightish. But straightish also. <laughs> straight. A straightish zigzag pattern, completely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. A cork screw, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, Meow. Lord Eros. Uh, okay, so far. Oh, I think we had I think we. Oh. Would this be a good time to attempt to advantage someone? Yes. Uh, ye... Well. I don't know how many of this works. <laughs> That's okay. Uh,. It I, wouldn't be really. Would you it? can. Uh, would you like to give advantage to Hallmark next time around? He has something. Yes. Control. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You can do that. Uh, I suppose. Sorry, I didn't see. Just kind of ninja up there. <laughs> <laughs> I will just dash very daintily and do a little dance while I go wow, as well. Wow, fun. Very beautiful, like ballet in the sky, except a very, uh, very glittery, very sparkly. I light up the whole tunnel. Wow. Arrow says. My goodness, that is fun! Can you give Walmart his advantage on this roll? Okay, so, so, so uh, countering that advantage, so now you have disadvantage on that, whatever your next roll is. Okay. That is Eva. So we have nothing on Okay, uh, Roussel. So, so far I have not seen anything untowards happening to my compatriots as they went into this tunnel. Uh, you can't, you can't make a perception check if you'd like. Uh, what's that? Oh. Again? Yes. Oh, so now it's the disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is for the, Hallmark or? Yeah. So yeah. advantage, disadvantage, to Dis be in neutral, and now I'm at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, I'll remember that now. <laughs> 18 perception to see what's going on in the top. Uh, as far as you can tell, everything seems fine so far with the two two cupids that have been gone before you. Very well, then I shall also dash, okay. uh, but at the end, when it seems like I've dashed all I can, I shall suddenly disappear in misty step 50 feet ahead of myself. Okay. So you are 115 feet. Mm -hmm. Hey, bud. Hey. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm just chilling. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to stay right here. <laughs> so my... Uh, I, I am kind of chill. Sure. So Ro okay. Rose is very laid back. Uh, that's kind of why you got a late start. That's what I'm going to uh, say. That's what you say about your natural one. Um, yeah, yeah. so, um, so he's actually uh, laying down uh, on his doves, and they're just carrying him. And while this is happening, so how... how, how so these two dashed. Yes. So how, how close would you say they are to each So everybody dashed. So uh, so um, uh, Stovar and Hallmark are 100 feet in front of you. Right. Uh, I'm actually 130. Misty Step is 30 feet. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and he's 130. And then, and then, like, distance side by side, like, how, how wide is the How wide is the tunnel? Yeah. That's a really good question that I didn't think about. Okay. Uh, we'll say 50 feet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Web okay. uh, on uh, Stovar. Uh, <laughs> okay. And so um, you conjure a massive, thick, sticky webbing at a point of your choice within range. Sticky. Web fills a 20-foot cube from that point for the duration. Um, Are you doing it just on his body? So like hanging from the ceiling, basically, okay. and then like to get a call. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, so each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them uh, must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, they're restrained for as long as it remains in the webs or until it breaks free. So as you cast this spell, uh, so far, uh, you can all of a sudden see this sticky web come down from the cave and you get caught in it. Give me a dex, oh. or well, give me a dex, give me a dexterity saving throw. All right. That is a 22. Mm. Um... Like to make that a nat one. <laughs> you made that a nat one, one, so you failed. So you are stuck in the sticky I'm web. Stuck in the sticky web. That's very rude of you. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad we incorporated this? I am. I'm loving it. I'm trying to win. 
I thought we were all supposed to be friends. <laughs> you hear, you hear Eros' booming voice say, this is getting off to a wonderful start. I'm really enjoying this. And as this happens, so this is the first turn over, we, um, we actually have a lair action. And so the cave, um, you all hear the cave start to rumble. And how far, how many feet did you go? Uh, so I would have just went my full, um, 50 feet? 50 feet, yeah. Okay, so you're, so everybody, you see, you hear the cave start to rumble, and rocky debris starts to fall around you. And I'm going to need, um, deck saves from everybody, which basically means, for those of you that aren't familiar with D&D, you basically, uh, are trying to roll the dice to, yes. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I so I believe I believe Hallmark has disadvantage with this roll, and you have advantage. Yeah, and I already rolled one. So. An eleven. Also eleven. Uh oh. Would you say there's a coast inside this cave? <laughs> there is no coast. <laughs> uh, Nineteen. Okay. To this <laughs> <laughs> he already, I think he already has this. Already, I don't know. This. Uh, I don't think he has, but it is a solid 12. Okay. Uh, Tell me what to do. Give it to someone else. Oh. Um, well, I just used mine so you can give it to me again. Yeah, for say, the next one. Well, I'll give it to you. So <laughs> <laughs> So, roll with advantage, so you right. roll with advantage, and the, you got a disadvantage, so it's, it's, it's the same. We'll, we'll do it for my next roll. Yeah, we'll do it for the next roll. Okay. okay, did anybody get above a 15? No. Uh-oh. Uh, I didn't. Did anybody get a 5 or lower? No. Well, that's good. But not good enough. So, you guys get um, all this rocky debris starts to hit you, and each one of you takes 10 points of bludgeoning damage as these these rocks not, wait what did you get yeah you didn't uh yeah uh rose and his doves dexterously get out of the way of all these rocky uh things so the next person that's up is hallmark how much longer do i have to perform uh you have 50 feet until you get to the the first challenge until i get to the first challenge mm -hmm. And as you as you are looking ahead, you do see an opening to the cave where you will exit. Exit okay. this oh. tunnel situation, but it's still a cavern. Oh, oh. Um, also, I seem to have all this equipment with me. Do I also have that, or is it just my bow and arrow? Uh, it's a one shot. So let's just see you have your bow and arrow. Curses. <laughs> <laughs> then I dash. Okay, so you, you go 100 feet, and you are in the cavern, and I will describe what you see uh, once everybody is there. Uh, actually, I will just tell you. Uh, <laughs> you. You actually enter a large cavern area, and the river, uh, the river water creates a waterfall into the area, and immediately you see a small island in the center, surrounded by a swamp. Does that island have a coast? It's uh, it's it's surrounded by it's surrounded. Man, I should have made you guys rangers. This is so annoying. Um, uh, you uh, it's it's surrounded by a swamp area. There is no coast. Uh, is it a grassland? It is not a grassland. It's an island. Um, uh, I guess you could technically count. No, there's no coast. No. Um. Uh, and on the island, you see um, you see Psyche unconscious and tied up to a stake. And I'm going to wait to describe everything else until everybody else gets there. Uh, Stovar. Uh, I would like to break out of these webs. Yes, I... please. Give me a, what is it, strength? Uh, it is... Yes, uh, Stovar is in these sticky webbing coming from the cave. Sticky situation. It's a real sticky situation. Yes. Um, strength check. Cool. Oh, Go ahead. Okay. Uh, seven. Yay! Oh, cool. Uh, twenty. That'll do it. Uh, twenty and a seventeen is what I got. So. Cool. So, uh, yeah. So, so how do you get out of these webs? What does it look like? Are you using your talons or your beak? I use my beak to just kind of tear through it. I open it up very gracefully, and you see just <laughs> glitter come out of my mouth and gush everywhere as it melts the webs around me. It's like and a very webby mask. Yes, I very gracefully fly out of it 
as I would like to continue flying yes. to the edge of the tunnel. Okay, you can do that. Okay. Okay. Glitter gushing is not a an image that I was expecting to. Glitter gushing. It's an interesting sentence, and I, I kind of like it. All right, so I'm going to fly 50 feet mm -hmm. ahead. I, I will be approaching this island. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And you see that? A, a little bit further ahead than some others. Okay. Can I, can I make a perception check and see if this really is our mistress tied up and not some ruse? Yes, make a perception check for me. And while you're doing that, um, will you take your turn? Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and dash okay. uh, with my doves carrying me and just smoking a cigarette. Um, <laughs> Do you have one of the cigarette holders? Yes, Is it oh, very absolutely. Long? Very good, I like that. Uh, 17. Okay, um, this is Psyche, and she is unconscious, and with your 17, um, what you wouldn't have noticed without this perception check, uh, there's a gelatinous ooze oh, oh taking dear. over her body and almost nearly devouring her, and her head is the only thing left uncovered. Um, this is something you cannot see without a perception check because the gelatinous cube has not moved yet. So it is... Very good. Well, it's, in that case, I've only moved, so I, I'm very alarmed. I'm going to launch uh, an arrow at this gelatinous okay. cube. Please, roll that. And so if, the... if anyone... Calling <laughs> <laughs> out for some help here. <laughs> Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, it hits. Oh, very so, good. Um, let me describe a gelatinous cube for those that do not know. It is literally an oozy um, uh, being. It's, it's just jello. It's just a jello y substance that uh, erodes away at people. All right, uh, six piercing damage. Okay. And for my second attack. Yes. Uh, that is 16. I'm sorry, 15. Does 15 hit? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's an ooze. It <laughs> doesn't have much AC. That's another 10 piercing. Okay. Does it cry out in pain? It just kind of... Very good, very good. I've <laughs> got... Did everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. What's that translate to? Ouch! <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so you dashed, and you're, everybody is inside this cavern now. So you can all see that um, this 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 woman is tied up to a stake, and um, you did not share the information about that. Well, it has not really moved yet. You just hit it. So, so you, it appears as if I'm shooting at her, doesn't it? It does. It does. Okay. Hallmark. Let's do it. Am I how far, about how far away am I? You're about, you dashed. So the, so I did not finish. The um, island is about 100 feet from the cave tunnel. So you're 50 feet in, so you're 50 feet away from the island where uh, Psyche is. And you're flying. So, you know, 50 feet plus. And how far away is Russell from you? Russell is a little bit in front of you. I think I'm 30 feet ahead of you. Yeah. May I ask a technical question? I would love it. <laughs> are the arrows standard? Of what? Are the arrows that we are carrying the standard arrows, or are they the cupid arrows? Uh, they're st it, um, standard. So I guess uh, you have you 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 kiss them before you use the love magic. You go boop. Oh, that, before you is that still active? <laughs> If you want to kiss it and just like, you know, make something fall in love with you, I guess you could try it. <laughs> and the bows are standard bows as well. Yeah. I mean, technically they're, they're magical weapons because you are magical. Oh. You're all magical. <laughs> like, what was the tensile strength? I mean. <laughs> what's that? What's that? How? <laughs> you know what I'm just going to do? This. I'm just going to fly up yep. to Rosell. Okay. Damn. I would like to take one of my daggers as I flash past him. Okay. And just clip the string of his bow. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> side of. Well, is that an attack roll? I guess that could be an attack. Yeah, an attack roll. Is it like a called attack? 
Like where you're attacking a specific part? I just, it, anywhere in this four foot stream. Yeah, it would probably be maybe a little harder yeah. uh, to hit because it is a specific area of the ball. Alright. I'll take that. Yeah, you will. I bet you will. Because Lawrence is my friend's dad. <laughs> so you're obligated. I get it. Uh, that is a 15. Um, I want to say... So it is an inanimate object, and... But I feel like that would be a little... I mean, 15 is my armor class, so you would hit me. Yeah, but if you're trying to, yeah, let's just say yes, because this is a one shot. Yep, you clip this, you clip this gun. <laughs> you don't have that no more. Curses. <laughs> Anything else? That was I your action? I just flipping the bird. Whoa! <laughs> you guys are birds, too. That's cute. Um, okay, uh, so, Hallmark, that was your turn? And then I'll continue from that to 20. Uh, uh, so may, I, are... may I make an attack of opportunities? You leave my. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got it. It's necessary. Advantage. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We're just going to like get everybody against each other in this audience. Everybody's going to pick their favorite pupil. Uh, There's going to be a real fight that happens tonight. <laughs> uh, 25 to hit. That'll do. What, what just happened? Disadvantage. Just cancel it out. After I roll... Yeah, you already rolled. Yeah, roll. Next roll. Next roll. Yeah. Disadvantage, next roll. Uh, that is nine... Uh, Disadvantage. Piercing. Well, <laughs> well I, okay. that, that stings. <laughs> so you got two disadvantages? I've got two disadvantages at banked, I believe. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to remember that, but... We'll, I'll remember. Okay. Right. <laughs> Just keep two dice in your hand, I suppose. Yes. Uh, so did you, you did not, you did hit, you already rolled. Right. Yeah, yeah. that is nine points of damage. Okay, yes. great, okay. Um, and so now you, uh, so who, who, whoa, I got all confused with the disadvantages. It's his, it's all Hallmark's turn. No, that, Hallmark, finished. you, then we're at, um, uh, Stobar. No, Stobar. No, that, that, that was, that was my reaction. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I did no, see you, my, it's your turn. oh, it's well, my turn. Because you, that was your opportunity attack. But. Yeah. Hallmark, then Lucille. Oh, I thought he was before I was. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, well. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, I just saw my dear brother uh, apparently shoot at our, late, our master's mistress. And yes, I, you did. I can't blame uh, Hallmark for clipping his bow. So <laughs> I'll just give you a thumbs up as I fly forward to. Uh, Assess the situation. Can I do a perception check? You absolutely can. Uh, ten. Uh, so you don't. You still can't see what he was shooting at. Um, but I will say you do see that uh, at, with your perception check, you do see there's a really huge tree right next to her. Which I guess with your perception check, you would have also seen. There's a giant tree right behind her. And I'm going to need um, also everybody to tell me when next time how high they are versus where the island is. Um, uh, and you also see a ledge behind that seems like the way out. So, and uh, anyway, that's what I'm saying. And so, yes, I'll just fly my 50 feet forward out of the tunnel and approach okay. her. Okay. Uh, what was that? No, oh, yeah. So. Uh, Sorry, that's why I asked you guys to remember your turn because I'm not <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Remember. That's fair. <laughs> uh, I will say, no, you misunderstand. There's a threat. <laughs> and I'll fly. Am I. I'm 70 feet away, right? Sure. So. I don't want to take too much time up with movement. <laughs> so it's all just... Stop the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shoot. Uh, I guess I'm going to dash up near the gelatinous cube and land. Okay. You do that. All right. Anything else? That's it. Movement and action. Okay. And when you do that, and actually, you can pass this around. I've got. Kind of what it looks like. That's right. The psych in the middle. Okay. Oh, so. That's We're coming this way. Yep. That's the tree. Yeah. All right. So I will, knowing where the cube is, I'll be like 10 feet away from the cube, wherever that is. This is swampy area. Uh huh. So you can't land. You can't really land in the swampy area. Oh, it's a very tiny. Yep. Island indeed. Mm hmm. Mm. That's where the job is. All right. Well, I will be opposite her. Okay. 
And actually, when you do that, <clears throat> there was a, something that was holding its action. Oh, no. And as you do that, as you land, you see the, the ground next to you starts to shamble. Oh. <laughs> And come to life. So this swampy area, this plant life, starts to come to life. And it's going to try to slam attack you with its plant body. And it has a face, because that's fun. <laughs> Although it doesn't hit you, because it got a natural four on the dice. Oh. But now that is alive and awake. Everybody can see that there's a shambling mound, which is a swampy creature that kind of, uh, it's, it's large, and it kind of takes over that whole corner. So you can see that. Whose turn is it next? Okay. Uh, so Rose is going to uh, take his 50 feet of movement, flying forward. Yep. And um, I guess I'll do a perception check as well to kind of assess the situation and figure out what's going on. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Uh, that's a 10. Uh, you're, the only thing that you can really see is that tree uh, next to Psyche and uh, the fact that Psyche is unconscious and is tied to the stake. You cannot see... Did you alert everybody of the gelatinous ooze? Uh, I, I did. Yeah, I said there's a threat. Okay, so, so you... Well, I just said there was a threat. Oh, so no, you don't see it. Okay. It hasn't moved yet. All right. Okay. Anything else? That's going to be it. Okay. Homer. So on the island there is... Latinus You don't see that yet. I don't think you've done a perception check to see it. Oh, right, right, right. Well, I'm going to basically start there. But I see a shambling mound, and I see stacking deck. Is the tree separate from that? The tree is five feet next. It's next to and behind Psyche. It's, and it's huge. And Roussel is over there. Yep. It's still over there. I believe everybody's over there. Everyone's over there but me. Yep. I'm going to hold my action. Okay. Does that include movement, or do I have to also move first? You don't have to move. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. I'm just going to wait. Stovar? Well, uh, so I moved too closer to the island. Mm hmm Am I within reach of her, or am I still kind of... Uh, I would say, yeah, I would say well, you're still flying. Yeah. So you're probably t uh, 10 feet-ish around feet. her. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to go... Unless you want to be a little farther, depending on what you want. No, no, that's fine. I would like to go right above her, and then I would like to boop her right on the top of the forehead <laughs> as I cast protection from good and evil. Cool, cool. And what does that look like in slash do? So as I shake my feathers and I ruffle myself, you just see all of the glitter fall down on her, <laughs> and she begins glowing as well. Wow! As it appears that she's be the, the, the stuff that's around her, the mound and the ooze I don't know about, are just being <laughs> repelled, uh, to, to just kind of compelled to stay away from her. Okay. And attack everybody else who's not near her. Okay. Are they, does, do they have to do any kind of uh, saving throw or anything? Uh, I believe it's just creatures of, and yeah, these uh, these are aberrations, right? Um, the cube is just an ooze. Just an ooze. If that's that is what it says in the oh. monster manual. I, I don't have one on me, so I will defer to you. Yes. <laughs> then in that case, it will have disadvantage against the target. Okay. Uh, she also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Okay. And. Uh, Yes, yeah, if she is, then she no longer is. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm very concerned indeed about our mistress, so I will yes. also land and boop her on the nose uh, very gently and uh, cure her wounds and hope that she wakes up from this terrible situation. Okay. Good time for wild magic. Yeah. That's oh, a great that's a wild great magic. time for wild magic. Will it do for me? Would you? All of a sudden, as you're casting this spell, what's your roll? Seven. <laughs> you suddenly feel bashful Aww. about about Stovar, your brother, which is really weird. <laughs> we're getting into a little bit of yeah. ancestral. I don't know about all that, but uh, you spend your action crushing hard. <laughs> 
<laughs> you did that so much better than I did. Oh, I'm just embarrassed. That was you dumb. Are, you are too shy to act normally around Stobar this time, so you could not cast this spell. Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, that yours was better. Forget it. <laughs> Stobar backs up slim. <laughs> just, just, just give some, give some eyes. Um, and at this point, uh, so the gelatinous ooze, it is um, going to move and absorb Sykes head. Oh, no. And you hear, you hear Eros um, say, you hear his booming voice say, uh-oh, only a minute before she loses air. Oh, no. Okay, it's your turn, Rosette. <laughs> Why are you so excited about this? It's all a game! <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna fly down um, and get in range. I'm going to take an attack uh, at the gelatinous cube. Okay. Um, and that is going to be an 18 to hit. Yes, and I, in fact, since the gelatinous use has moved, everybody can see it. Go ahead. Sorry. What is it? Um, an 18 to hit. Yep. Um, and so something I can do with my swarm uh, is... What is your uh, swarm? Uh, my swarm of doves. I like to oh, doves. <laughs> um, I'm sorry? I'd like to have them roll at disadvantage on the <sighs> Disadvantage, my friend. Okay. All right, we're good. Uh, that's, cool. Yeah, it stays an 18. Cool. Um, so one thing I can do is the target that I hit... Uh, must succeed on a strength saving throw or be moved by my swarm of doves uh, 15 feet horizontally in a direction of my choice. Okay, what is um, that? So I I want to do a little bit of shenanigans here, I love this. If, 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 if possible. Yes. Um, could half of my doves move the gelatinous cube while the other half is trying to separate Psyche from Hell yeah. the gelatinous Let's do it. Okay, so... Yes? I actually would like to attempt something to assist that. Uh, as a reaction? You can do that, yeah. Yeah, we sure. have just, it, since I've held my action. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm how far from the Shambler Mound? Uh, I don't, I don't remember. So you're near it. I basically want to dive bomb into it and see if I could like push it in to create a further separation. Okay. Like basically just dive into it, kick it, and <laughs> yeah. hopefully not die. Okay, cool. Uh, do what you're going to do first. So uh, I, I rolled to hit, and I get an 18. Yep, you um, hit. So damage would be 1d8. Um, so that's just four points of piercing. Okay. Um, and then a strength saving throw of 15 um, from. Uh, Surprisingly, it, it is, has plus two to strength, but it got an 11, so good. Perfect. So it it separates itself. My, my doves just dive bomb into this gelatinous cube. And separate it. <laughs> just, just like bullets just going through the gelatinous <laughs> cube. But, but then so they just go, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Okay, cool. So the ooze is no longer, it gets separated and is no longer on, it gets pushed. 15 feet from Psyche, so it's oh. no longer on Psyche. Perfect. Great. And you want to do what, do what to the Shambling Mound? I basically want to kick the Shambling Mound into the ooze now that they're separated. Okay, uh, give me a, uh, an attack roll. Advantage. See if you get another 20. I do not. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is a dirty 20, though. Oh, very good. Yes, you uh, dive kick the shambling mound, and the shambling mound, uh, since they're both large, yeah, so the, the shambling mound hits the cube and starts to get sucked into the cube, and uh, it takes some damage. Anything else for both of you? This is a game of gentlemen, and I just assume to not, to keep it that way. Let's move on. Here you say it again. Um, I, uh, I gave him advantage. Thank you. Thank, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Stowar. Um, is she freed from her restraints? She is not. She's still tied to the stake. Okay. She is free of the gelatinous cube, though. Can so, I free her from her 
I would love that. Streets, yes. Yeah. I would like to do that with one of my hand axes very okay. carefully. Yes. So as not to, you know, hurt her. Yeah. Her wrist. That's a free action. I'd say you could just do that. Cool. Cool. And then I would like to uh, lift her up and put her over my shoulder. Okay, wing. so you are a little baby. So I give am. me <laughs> um, yes. give me a strength uh, check. I will say it's probably going to be almost impossible for a little baby Cupid, but if anybody wants to... Yeah, may I help? I would be next up. I would, yes. The two of us yes. as brothers. As brothers. As like, brothers. Like, You're no longer bashful of your own brother. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's good. That's good. I'll, I'll allow him to help then. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's get her out of here. Oh, disadvantage though, this roll. Oh, 18? Oh, wait, is this just, um... Just strength. Strength? Yeah. You probably have a minus one. I do. Uh, 13. Uh, yeah, together, uh, combined, your powers combined. You, um, you, you each take legs and arms and, I don't know, what are, how do you describe it? I'll grab her head in a very awkward way. <laughs> so her, head, her, her arms are just like this, and you just have her head, and you would. I'll, I'll, I'll let her right on the, I guess, my very tiny back as he lifts her head, and she can just kind of right on my wings, sort of. Okay. And, yeah. yeah that, we already rolled about it, so it's working. Um, so you, you grab Psych. Are you flying? Uh, yes. You have to do yeah. half your half your move. Well, together combined, I'd say you could do full move. Okay, then I'll, then we can fly her to the hole in the wall that we saw before. Uh, sure, yeah. Is it that close? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I will say, um, as you do, uh, you see a couple, sit, or do you lay her down, or what do you? Is there a place to lay her down? Yes, there's a ledge, um, right before, so there's a ledge, and then an opening into the next tunnel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you do, you see two satyrs just kind of pop out and appear, and they go, oh, we got her! And uh, they start to drag her off. Do we recognize these satyrs as okay, it's like, to um, just take her? You can ask. I don't think you've ever met these satyrs. Who are you? Hold up, man. I'm Butch. <laughs> and I'm Heinrich. We're here to take her away. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> off to the next challenge. Can, we do, can I do an inside check? Yeah, let's do, I want to do an inside check, too. Come on. Is there a master stater? 18. 16. This is Butch and Heinrich, and they're off to take her away, and it's fine. It, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. All right. It's, it's, it's fine. fine. It's, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> okay, so um, I would say, uh, Eros, you hear Eros's voice booming, and he goes, Wow, just in time, first challenge success. Uh, great, we're going to be off to the next challenge, and uh, um, you enter the tunnel once more, and we're going to take a quick 10-minute intermission there, and we'll be right back in 10 minutes. Yay. <laughs> ledge and you have just saved psych um and the two seaters butch and heinrich pulled her away and it's fine it's fine it's um fine. so you enter the tunnel once more and we are at the top of the round which means um a rare action uh, yes the water below <laughs> you starts to swirl violently a large reptilian head with a serpentine neck emerges from the water, revealing its very sharp teeth and emits a huge roar. But that's not all. Another similar head reveals itself, followed by three more. Yes, the lair action is a hydra. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so get ready, folks. Uh, all right, so the lair action. So the hydra pops up out of the water um, and you are all on this ledge, and it can't reach you quite yet. But wasn't there some sort of exit that the ledge uh, was a hard Yeah, it goes right back into the tunnel with the water. Oh, the, in, so this is in, in front it of us. It continues, yep. It's in front of you. It's in front of us. Mm -hmm. Well... And uh, that's, that, it just pops up, and that's what it does. Um, so, uh, Hallmark, what do you do first? 
Yes? Okay, spell cloud. Uh, actually, um, you cast spell cloud. What happens instead? Roll a d8 for me. As you do that, a um, surge of wild magic. Well, that will be a one. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> one is rather low, isn't it? So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, your your body becomes chocolate. Literally. <laughs> Until the start of your next turn, you are, you are vulnerable to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, along with fire damage. You might melt. But I'm not delicious. You are, I don't know, try a bite. <laughs> 70% cacao, my favorite. <laughs> so that's what happens instead of you casting Fog Cloud. Um, and that's your turn. Sorry. Um, and my spell slot. Yep, and your spell slot. Uh, Stovar, what do you do? Wow, says the Hydra. Oh, how far away is this Hydra? Uh, it's close. close. It's right there. All right, I guess as a bonus action, I'm going to designate it for my Slayer's Prey. There it is. Yeah. Now being a ranger really counts. Oh, yeah, to do an extra D6 of damage to it, and then I'm okay. going to shoot it. Yes. In one of its heads. Okay. With a, oh, nat 20. Whoa! <laughs> All right, what do you, what's the damage, my friend? It's a D8 plus 3, so I guess a 2D8. Yep, it is. There's a six and a two. Okay. So that's uh, 11 damage. All right. Plus, oh, another D6. So four. Woo! So 15. To total 15 damage. Yep. You do a, a striking blow on this uh, Hydra. You get oh, yes. two You get two actions. So, so you want to do another? Yep, I will go ahead and shoot another head with a two. Okay. Four, but, 10. Oh, advantage. Advantage? Oh, thank you. Heck yeah. <laughs> With a 20. Dirty yeah. 20. Hits. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you indeed. <laughs> For 11 plus 5. Great. 16. That is two crazy arrow hits, like right yeah, in his head. Yeah, right in his head. I go right through each one of the Does eyes. Does it glitter? Of course it glitters. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. Okay. Um, uh, Roussel, it is your turn, but what happens is on your turn, um, magically, yes, a, do you want to say it? Well, I'm going to say I'm, I'm rather alarmed and instinctively reached for my bow, which has now been severed, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yes, but actually, uh, as, as chance would have it, a crossbow magically forms in your hand, <laughs> and now you can attack with it. I must, I suppose. Um, yes, I will. Uh, how does that head look that he hit? Uh, actually, it did. You did um, more than twenty-five damage, so that head is gone. Very good. Well, we got four more heads. <laughs> very good. I, I will look at the next head over and, okay. and try to They're strike all near it. each other because that's easy. Oh, that's not correct. Oh, the misses. Okay. It's a different kind of bow. I'm really not used to yeah, this Yeah, you're not used to it. This is going to be 20, dirty 20. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to infuse my bow with a very Jesus. special... No. <laughs> okay. Being Whatever. railroaded. A planar energy to add more power to oh, it. Oh, cool. Yes, uh, so... Uh, that is 11 piercing. Okay. And I haven't moved yet, have I? No, you have not. How big is this this damned creature? You can't really tell because it's mostly in the water, but um, give me a perception check. Uh, that's going to be 16. It's huge. <laughs> Very good. Well, it's it's it could be to my advantage, so I'm going to use my bonus action okay. to once again misty step. On the far side of it, if I can, 30 feet. You can, Apparently. yes. Rosé. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Rosé is going to fly up on his swarm. Um, and um, can, if 
Rosé flies behind mm -hmm. the Hydra, yep. would, we able to be, would we be able to get flanking at all? I'm already yeah. on the other side. Sure. Sure, let's do it. Sure. All right. Um, so I'm going to take a, a couple shots. Uh, so the first one. Advantage. Then... Oh, yes. You get advantage on both your attacks. Nice. Nice. Up here. Let's fight this Hydra together. Let's band together and fight this Hydra. Okay, um, so the first one is going to be a 26 to hit. Woof, yep. Uh, and that is going to be um, 10 points piercing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I can also... I believe that head is gone. Two heads down, three uh, to go. My swarm uh, also gives me an extra... <laughs> D6 damage. So my, my doves just kind of fly next to my arrows and like peck at the at the hydras I guess, okay. uh, for an extra two damage. Okay. And then <laughs> 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 uh, and second attack uh, is going to be a uh, twenty-four to hit. Yep. Uh, with uh, seven eight uh, that's gonna be Another 11 points of ha 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 ha. We love that ha 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 So that is uh, the turn for all, the round for all of you, except for after this this first round, you um, give me perception checks, if you will. Oh. One, three, eight. What'd you get? 23. 13. Eight. 24. Um, Stovar. Elizabeth, can I grant advantage to Doug here? You absolutely can grant Thank you. <laughs> I got a natural one. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for trying. Wow, magic! Wow, magic! Wow, magic! Whoa, okay. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's true. That's yes. Time. You can do it. No, it is. Time. It's on a natural one. It's a natural one. I know. I'm saying that she wanted to do wild magic, too. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Two people wanted to do wild magic. Again. All right. Uh, which I love. Thank you. Uh, roll roll D8. D8. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm attacking no. it. Uh, four. A number we've not seen yet. Okay. Um, the, it, <laughs> this one's not as exciting. It, no, it's great. It's really fun. Um, uh, illusory butterflies and flower petals flutter in the air within ten feet of you at all times now. Um, and that's it. <laughs> no, 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 they're just there. <laughs> can everyone else see them? Or just yeah. okay. Okay. No, right. wouldn't it be funny? If, no, no. You're the only one that can see them okay. when you're doing yeah. that. Right. I like that a lot. Um, as that happens, uh, Stovar and Hallmark, you um, hear a pss, 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 pss. Uh, and as you look, as you both look, you you Excuse you me. look up, and <laughs> you look up, and you see a head poking out of a small area tucked into the cave wall. It's another Cupid, and actually, Hallmark, you recognize this Cupid. This is Chanel. Well, Chanel, by the gods, what are you doing here? <laughs> come here, come here, and it actually is your turn. Well, you, then I, 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 I scoot over. Okay. <laughs> Have you tasted me? <laughs> and then you're Homer, Homer, I have been trapped in here for 50 years. I'm telling you. So that so when you look at Chanel, um, they look. Five. What's that? Is it number five? It's not. It yeah sure. It, it's number six actually. I don't know if that exists, but it's Chanel number six. And um, they actually look worse for wear. They they have scratches and old wounds on their body, and they look kind of malnourished but kind of buff, like if they were on like the TV show Lost. You know what I mean? Just kind of like. <laughs> You know, they've been like in it, you know, kind of sweaty and dirty for some reason. Um, they, uh, but they look like they're, they've been survived a whole lot. And they tell you, and they say, what does Chanel sound like? I don't know. What does what, Chanel sound what like? What does Chanel sound like? Um, Chanel sounds like this. <laughs> I almost said something I would regret, and I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, uh. During the last tournament, that's got to be it. During the last tournament, I, w I was scheming to save Psyche, and Eros found out about it. Uh, the satyrs kidnapped me, and he locked me in here. Eros doesn't have our well-beings in mind anymore. All he wants to do is impress the audience. He's, he's all about his own ego. He doesn't even care what happens to Psyche anymore. I saw the fact that she was being overtaken by the ooze. We all know shit. <laughs> oh, I guess it wasn't, I, I thought it wasn't that obvious, but I guess it is. Um, what do we do? Should we take, I want to take him. 
Take it by storm. You want to take what by storm? Eros. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> uh, and as, um, uh, uh, with your perception check, you hear this. Um, the, whole, the whole thing. Yeah, you hear the whole thing. Um, Unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, I think we just take Psyche and, and, and go for it. And actually, I'm going to do a roll for Eros right now. Yeah, I knew it! So I didn't open a character sheet that I should have a long time ago. So we're waiting for just a second. But I'm assuming his perception's really good. But he has disadvantage. So, um, let me just... Just a little pride before the fall. Okay. So that's 14. And... Okay. Both are pretty relatively good numbers. But, let's see, perception. Okay. Um, got a 17. So, he's going to hear this. And he's going to, uh, uh, He's gonna say, uh, hey, hey, this is this is not how this is supposed to go. I'm I'm watching you, the crowd is watching, this is against the rules, and you can all hear this. You can all hear this. Uh, there will be repercussions. Uh, and you kind of hear some um, shuffling around, like the mice hot. Yeah, uh, like someone's real flustered. Uh, and uh, do you say anything back? I don't think it did. Chanel, I'll say, I'll do it then. Uh, <laughs> Chanel, Chanel, say, you're not going to get away with this, Eros. Y yeah, I'm just inclined to acquiesce that request. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you hear Eros say, okay, well, I, you know what? I'm coming in there. I'm not. I will not stand by this. You will be. You better be in the next cavern so we can discuss this. Uh, audience members, you know, ha, 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 these things happen. Um, just uh, you know, uh, hold tight. Uh, grab a drink or uh, take a look at our merch tent. Um, you know, we've got uh, some. Uh, <laughs> we've got some Battle of the Cupid koozies, uh, hats, and T-shirts. Uh, we even have little strap-on Cupid wings. So uh, check that out, and uh, we'll be with you momentarily. Uh, what do you guys do? I start licking every arrow in my quiver. <laughs> um, and actually, as this happened, the Hydra, uh, almost as if like it's an uh, animatronic situation, goes back into the water. And what do you do? Is he in the room? Did arrows come? So you're in the tunnel, but you can see a cavern, another cavern where the next challenge would be. So you're welcome to fly there. And we just heard his voice booming. You did. Okay. You yeah. know all of it. So Guys, I, I, he's there. Yeah, I think things are about to get a bit spicier. Uh, I really apologize in this moment for disadvantaging you with that arrow trick, but I do not really Well, know. all's well that ends well. I have this trusty crossbow now, so let's band together and see what awaits us in the next cavern. Is, yeah. is Hallmark still made of chocolate? <laughs> um, right. I would like to hand one single less important favor to Chanel. You look like you need a tree. Mm, yeah, I haven't eaten in 50 years. Uh, yes. Oh. Are you gonna... No, I just wanted to know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, eventually, once you get to the cavern, uh, it uh, you become your normal baby body. Huzzah. Yes. Uh, um, on, on the way to the cavern, may I do something? I would love that. Yes, I would just like to cast protection from evil and good. Okay. On yourself? Yes. Oh, very good. Yes, okay. please. Chaos. <laughs> I love chaos. Oh. Okay. Uh, another new one, number two. Oh, um, instead of that, I'm going to do a different one. Very good. Because that's a candy heart one. We don't have candy heart. Um, <clears throat> a talking alicorn oh. appears next to you. Hello, fella. Uh, for those of you that don't know what an alicorn is, is a unicorn and a pegasus mixed together, is, so it's a unicorn with wings. Um, I learned that a long time ago. Someone um, actually with me about that. Who is Anna still here? I don't think so. Uh, so um, 
Uh, <laughs> 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 I just made myself a joke. Um, so, um, you, you see an alicorn appear next to you, you go, Hello. <laughs> well, you are a jolly little chap. I'm here to serve you. Well, right Just on a minute, though. Oh, well, let's, let's hurry then. Okay. Um, By the way, what's your name, which you would totally know right now? Uh, my name? Oh, me? Yes, yes. Spit my, it out. My name? Like a 30 second conversation. <laughs> oh, oh, me? Oh, it's Cassandra. Well, that's a lovely name. It's quite lovely indeed. Thank you very much. I'm here to serve you for a little bit. All right. I've got some powers that maybe, you know, you've never seen before. Well, don't tell, tell me what I've seen and haven't I'm seen. I'm an fair. I can't put you in that spot, my bad. Let's go! Let's get this guy. Yes, that's, I don't even know what we're doing, but I, I'm here to I do hop it. on and we ride away. All right. Are you going to ride my back? Yep. Hop here I am. On. Why do you look like you're seeing things around yourself? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Can we can we all hop on, Cassandra? You can all hop on, my bag. Go on, I'm up, Cassandra. Um, so you enter the next cavern, and <laughs> you like Cassandra? Okay. Uh, um, you all enter the next cavern. Um, and it looks like it was set up to be another, um, uh, you know, another challenge. Um, and this one, I believe, doesn't matter. I don't remember what it was supposed to be. But you see a bunch of satyrs. And um, you also see, uh, well, you haven't done the perception check. Yes, so may I look and yeah, see what we see? Uh, <laughs> Disadvantage. <laughs> you don't want you to see nothing. <laughs> Uh, what is that, a nine? That's chaos. <laughs> That's all I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, 12. Yeah, you just see some, a bunch of satyrs, and they're all standing around, like, you know, like, on their break? Because Eros, actually, is standing in the middle of them, and uh -huh. he's saying, and uh, he sees you all enter, and he, and he says, well, if, uh, if you can't behave, I guess you just can't leave. Um, and uh, is there anything you want to say to him? Anybody? No? Uh, okay. Well, is, 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 is the uh, Chanel telling the truth, <laughs> Master Eros? What do you mean? Well, she said that she didn't Chanel, care about Chanel, that. I told you to stay in your little rock corner. You're not supposed to leave. Uh, so she was telling the truth? You don't care about psych? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Of course I care about something. I feel like you're stalling. Uh, I would like to go ahead and... Uh, I would like to cast Zone of Truth on... Oh! Wow, oh, man, it's certain. Or I, I will can, not cast Zone of Truth. You will, but... Uh, I was going to tell you, you can do it. But. Just other things will happen. All right, roll a d8 for me. All right. Oh, there you go, uh, four. Uh, okay, um, so, uh, uh, roll it again, because we've already done that one. <laughs> Two. Uh, that's fine. Um, so, your, um, you, uh, roll a d6 for me. Two. Okay, um, so, you actually, and you're all in the room, right? So, uh... <laughs> In this room with the wrestling and the silver <laughs> So you're all in the room, and um, two. You roll a two, one, two. Right now, um, you are charmed by Rose for, for a minute. Oh. You're just really. It's cute. Hey, Rose. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> funnier if you guys were like battling earlier and it would be better, but you know, it's just the way it goes. Um, uh, so you you tried to cast out a truth, it didn't work out. Um, Eros is like, haha, yes, of course. I, you know, if you, you know what, it, even if you didn't use your arrows on Psyche, she'd still love me. You know, I'm beautiful, she's the most beautiful, I'm the most beautiful immortal, she's the most beautiful immortal, it wouldn't even be a thing, it's fine. And actually, as you um, look around with the perception check that you did, you do see um, Psyche is just sitting there uh, in the corner. 
Just she, hanging out. She, is she is she like caught? <laughs> she she seems pretty chill. Bitch, do you have a personality? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? And actually, as you um as you uh um actually give me a perception check on her specifically. Uh, that is a twenty six. Yeah. With a very high roll, you can tell that Psyche is looking everywhere except for where Eros is. There's something about uh, his persona. She's not allowed to look at him, so she she still does not see him. Like, do you not see this man who is obviously not is so disinterested in you? You cannot look upon him. Disinterested in who now? The uh, Eros. I love Eros. Do you? <laughs> and I cast Zone of Truth on her? <laughs> yes, you can. All right. Do you really love Eros? Uh, what do I need to do for that? Uh, you can make a charisma saving throw. Okay. She got a 10. I don't think that makes it. Okay. Um, she says, I love Eros. Could I? I'm going to drop protection from evil and good on myself. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly over to her and touch her and cast it on her so she can no longer be charmed by someone else. So she has the ability to make a saving throw to no longer be charmed. Okay. Uh, and advantage is... on the next saving throw, which y- you know what the situation is like, if she is charmed or not. She's she is. Okay. I mean, you guys have done this to her. Okay. So she if she gets to make a saving throw, she gets to have an advantage on it. Okay. Whoa. Uh, eighteen. Uh, I mean, it's you're you're setting the DC. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I thought that was part of the spell. Is it not? No, no. It's just if she gets to roll a saving throw out of her being charmed, she gets advantage. Oh, okay. On. So you um, yeah, DC. you all of a sudden see her kind of uh, and she goes, um, what is it? she goes, what, what's going on? Where am I? Where are my sisters? Uh, I keep thinking of this guy named Eros, but I can't seem to put a face to the name. Um, and Eros says, this will not do, and he's going to attack you. Okay. <laughs> With a spell. <laughs> a spell. <laughs> One that could be wild magic. <laughs> Get wild, so I'll roll a d8 for Eros. Uh, who's closest do you think to Eros? You probably, because you're next to Psyche. Yeah, he probably came over to us. Okay. Um, he becomes bashful of you. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's, he's like, oh, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't possibly cast a spell in front of you, Roussel. No, 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 couldn't do it. Um, so you can tell that he's, uh, he's, he's trying to be, uh, could I, could I just turn the other direction like I'm just ignoring him, like, so anyway? Oh, my. Uh, he takes, like, t- t- ten, ten points of psychic damage because it hurts his heart. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and at this point, uh, does anybody else want to do anything to Eros? May I make an arcana check on what I understand of? the licking of these magic arrows. It's a kiss! It's not a lick! It's a... I don't have lips. That's oh, true. I guess yeah. it is like a... You it's could a just beak. go like, thank, thank you. Uh, well, let's, let's be careful. It would be really weird if, uh... Yeah, you just knock the beak on the... Anyway. Um, yeah, go ahead. What are you exactly looking for? What the hell it does? <laughs> like, can I, you... Can I... Now having given chocolate kisses to my arrows, <laughs> have I enchanted them in some way? Uh, yeah, what'd you get? Uh, a one. Oh! <laughs> what, do you, what would you like to do? Uh, come out of your hat? <laughs> Just flop out of your hat. He's got hat money. He's got hat money. Hat money. Absolutely. Oh, hey. okay, I'll go. Hey. Less a 12. Uh, as far as we can tell, it's Cupid magic. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> On arrows? Might as well. Okay. Uh, he's going to do a charisma check. Saving throw, actually. 
He's pretty charismatic, so. He gets a dirty 20, and he says, ah, ah, he catches it. Make it a natural one. Whoa! <laughs> um, so you, so you, ca so you uh, hit oh, him right in the heart with your arrow, and he goes, oh, Hallmark, you've won. <laughs> you've won the challenge, you've won my heart. Will you be my lover? And at this point, um, <laughs> This is really escalated. This is really escalated <laughs> quite quickly. And um, you actually hear a booming voice. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a woman's voice. And uh, you hear... I'm making myself laugh at my own notes. Um, you hear, Eros Urethria Titan Spawn. What? <laughs> what on this immortal plane are you up to? The tournament is today, and you just happen to not tell me. And then you hear um, another very booming, deep male voice, which I'm going to try to really nail. Uh, you hear, Eros, Uranus, Bumphrodite. What is all of this commotion? Generally, I am a big fan of rowdy affairs like war and stuff, but this is a little wacky, don't you think, bud? Uh, and he says, Venus, how did you not know? What's this I hear about him keeping a mortal woman charmed against her will? Toxic masculinity is so passe. <laughs> uh, and Eros is like, I don't know. I love Hallmark now. Um, <laughs> and uh, Psyche is like, uh, does anybody want to do anything? I'm just watching. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a one-man show now. Uh, and uh, Psych basically uh, is like, I don't know what's going on. Can I leave? Is this, are we good? I, I think so. Can you guys, like, fly me away? I, I'm pretty tired. I would we've appreciate got a, some help. We've got a lovely alicorn who would be... Your voices sound very familiar. Oh yeah, I'm Cassandra. I can, I can fly you right away. Please, my lady. Your 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 voices sound so familiar. I, I yes. feel like I know you. It is I, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man. We're all here. <laughs> you got doves? I feel like I've been missing out on a lot of things. It's just your imagination. Oh wow. Know. I must have a really good imagination. Um, and then uh, you guys hear a, a, a real a voice in the corner, um, and it, and you hear, "Hey, uh, hey, can I go?" And as you look in the corner, you see a giant red dragon. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to nibble first? Because we got a guy right here that honestly no one is. At this point in time, a fan of. I was like, hired. and it would get me out of a really uncomfortable situation. Yeah, like, I was hired to like do a thing, like kill you guys. I think, but like I, I got stuff to do. I got, I have an agenda. So, yeah, no, do do what you gotta do. Are, I think we'll. Are you still looking for compensation? <laughs> Why do you do you have? Do you have? Do no. Have some? no. Oh. <laughs> but if you want to give us a ride out of here, like we'll, we'll help. Hey, it's probably a lot easier than like fighting. You know what I mean? And honestly, it feels like you guys probably would have died. Oh yeah. I mean, if you're hungry, you can eat that arrows guy. I guess if you want. I mean. Give me a persuasion check. Oh. Does anybody want to help? Does anybody want to help? <laughs> yeah. I will. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, it's 20. <laughs> yeah. You get a nat 20. Like it, like it, uh, he's like, I mean, I could eat. And uh, he chomps down on Eros and Venus, and it, it, his parents are like, okay. <laughs> guess how that went. I guess that's how that went. Um, and Bubbles eats Eros. Oh, yeah, the Red Dragon's name is Bubbles. Oh. <laughs> and um, basically, uh, you guys are, so the tournament is canceled. Eros is canceled. Uh, Psych is uh, free to choose um, the love or no love, you know? And uh, Cupids are free to roam with their bow and arrows and use them for good. So, uh, 
Did I miss anything? Uh, are you saying we're unemployed? I think so. <laughs> you, you can file, the Bible says you can file for unemployment with me. Let's go! <laughs> I gotta have something to do with this. There we go. <laughs> All right, uh, and I think that wraps it up, everybody. Hey. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, we have another live one shot on March 18th uh, here. Uh, Anna. Over there. Over there is, is running it. So um, thank you so much for coming out. Chat with us after the, after the.